<laughs> right, let's go. Marine species respond to warming by shifting their distribution. They can't regulate their own body temperature, but they're keeping pace with climate change. This diagram shows um, change in climate and that, whoops, my, my presentation's moving quite fast as well. <laughs> that taxa, the organisms shift along with the climate change uh, latitudinally and also with respect to depth. So marine species shift at different rates and directions, but they're tracking the complex mosaic of local climate change in the sea. Well, what about uh, corals on reefs? We've seen modern coral species migrations now from Japan on both the East uh, China Sea and along the Kuroshio Current in the Pacific Ocean. You can see uh, that through time, the taxa are moving towards uh, the north. That's occurring in Japan. The same thing's happening in Florida. Here's a movement of our friend, Acropora cervicornis. What do you mean you haven't heard of our friend? The branching coral, fast growing, usually down here. Whoops. They're, it's moving very fast. <laughs> and uh, now these taxa are, this species is moving north. The same thing's happening in Western Australia. We now have uh, Acropora branching corals at Rottnest Island. So the next time you go to Rottnest Island from Perth, you can observe um, these branching corals. Well, what about the east coast? Here we are on the, on the east side, and this is also occurring. Uh, four species have been recently discovered way down in the solitary islands that hadn't been discovered before, so corals are moving uh, along this coast as well. So, but what about in the geological past? This is a, uh, a look at what's happening today. As a matter of fact, 125,000 years ago, wow. 125,000, yeah, I shouldn't have that glass of wine, I guess. <laughs> 125,000 years ago, climates were just a little bit warmer than they are today, maybe one to two degrees. Does that sound familiar? Maybe that's about what's happening in the next sort of several decades. So we've got like a, a, a natural laboratory uh, in the geological past that we can look at species distributions of corals. And uh, today, we have a very clear demarcation between northern, uh, warmer, um, um, biogeographic zone called the Damperian province and a southern Flindersian province. Well, 125,000 years ago, we had virtually one uh, single province going up and down the coast. There were coral reefs, not only at Rottnest Island, but also in the Margaret River, and even uh, south around uh, the southern part of Western Australia. So uh, there was lots of taxa that either expanded south or retracted north. Uh, shown in red and um, bold here. So lots of things uh, compared to today in the warmer Pleistocene uh, move, were moving south. So we have this great ability of corals to, to move. Now, does this mean that we're going to have coral reefs in Sydney? Um, can we look forward to sort of getting out of the opera and um, having a swim on the reef, a snorkel? Well, in order to answer this question, we've looked at distributions more globally. And so this is the orange is the distribution of modern reefs. And um, the red is where we have some data on the fossil reefs. And we compared uh, what the distribution, the, the species diversity uh, along latitudinal gradients were between the modern and the Pleistocene. When you do that, when you first look at the modern, you find the, uh, a, a classic sort of increase in diversity in the tropics and a decrease towards the poles for corals. But notice this dip here around the equatorial region, E is for equator, and there's about a 10% drop in coral diversity around the equatorial regions. And when you look in the Pleistocene, which, rem which remember was warmer and was sim sort of similar to what we're looking ahead to in the next several decades, we find um, they don't want to move, okay, there they are, uh, that the Pleistocene equatorial dip is on the order of 35 to 50 percent. So you go from about 120 species that we had that, whoops, oh, I've lost my presentation now. <laughs> Could I have my presentation back, please? I, I promise I won't be too much longer. Oh, now I can zip through it. <laughs> no, now it doesn't want to move. So here we go. There we go. Should I be pointing in that direction?
Yeah, so there's our dip uh, in the Pleistocene with um, uh, between 35 and 50% less um, corals in, in the equatorial region. So a really dramatic uh, difference between cooler uh, modern times and warmer Pleistocene times. So what does this mean? Um, corals are on the run. Marine organisms globally are moving uh, toward cooler sea surface temperatures, including corals, and corals have responded similarly in the past. Um, we have that information. But really, corals uh, from equatorial regions really can't hide. Um, we've lost coral bi biodiversity during past climate change. What does that mean for the future of reefs in the 21st century? We need to conserve poleward habitats, which might serve as refugia for degraded equatorial reefs. I think that's a sensible management strategy. Uh, but all this has to be uh, taken in the context of cleaning up local stressors, because if we're too busy degrading uh, our reefs through over-harvesting, pollution, eutrophication, and these kinds of things, then uh, climate change isn't going to really matter much because the reefs won't be there to experience it. Thank you very much.